welcome all of you to this mock course on fluid mechanics. Today we will have a very interesting topic that is what Bernoulli's equations. Uh, as of now if you know it uh, the very initially I discuss about Newton's laws of viscosities. Then we discuss about Reynolds transport theorem. The, the Bernoulli's equations another uh, contributions by Bernoulli's is used in different fluid flow problems. In a short, I can tell you that these equations uh, helps us to solve the many fluid flow problems by considering energy conservations or a linear momentum equations. So, uh, and this is very uh, easy equations in terms to incorporate a between the energy losses observed from the experimental data to analytical framework. So, that is the reasons these equations mostly used for fluid flow problems, because these equations looks as energy conservation equations also it looks like the linear momentum equations along a streamlines. Let us uh, have a discussion today on these uh, equations, Bernoulli's equations. I have prepared these lectures in a very interesting way. Uh, let us look at uh, these lectures in very positive way uh, to understand what is the Bernoulli's equations. As I know, uh, at the class 11th or 12th level, you know what is Bernoulli's equations, but many of the times you do not know uh, when you apply the Bernoulli's equations, what are the assumptions behind that. Is it energy conservation equation or a linear momentum equations? That questions also poses us uh, whenever we apply this uh, energy conservation equation. Because, uh, always we need to solve the pressure field and the velocity field. That is what I discussed earlier. Whenever we talk about uh, fluid mechanics, we talk about two fields are important for us for incompressor flow that is our pressure field and the velocity field. But how we can simplify these two fields using this Bernoulli's equations? That is the strength of the Bernoulli's equations. And that is the reason these equations are extensively used to solve the fluid flow problems. Not only that, as you know, we have now the fluid mechanics uh, solvers like compositional fluid dynamics. The lot of things has improved in fluid mechanics in terms of compositional fluid dynamics, in terms of experiments. But whoever the fluid mechanics specialist he first look is two conservation principles. One is mass conservation. Second, he uses the Bernoulli's equation to verify the results either from experimental or from the results obtained from computational fluid dynamics. So, that is the reasons even if we have a two day very uh, advanced tool us, uh, with us, but these equations really have a lot of applications for us to check their results are they correct or not. So, with this uh, brief introductions, let I go uh, uh, to the today contents of the lectures. We will start with ap applications because as I know, you know what is Bernoulli's equations, what is the, comp the terms in the Bernoulli's equations. I will start with the applications, then I will go for Bernoulli experiment that what is we did in fluid mechanics lab in IIT Guwahati. Then I will commit to theoretical derivations of Bernoulli's equations that is the part what we will cover it and uh, we will have uh, theoretical derivations of Bernoulli's equations and then what we will follow it again I will come back to explaining this Bernoulli's equations using virtual fluid ball concept. And then you can easily visualize the fluid flow problems and we will solve some of the simple example problems 
uh, using Bernoulli's equations. At the last, I will talk about the sense of balance what we have in, in the human body okay, and we will have a summary. So, I will start from applications, then go for experiment, then the derivations of Bernoulli's equations and then I will talk about the virtual fluid ball concept what I introduced for you and some two examples will just demonstrate it how we can use the Bernoulli's equations with mass conservation equations. Then I will talk about sense of the balance and the summary. Let us look it very interestingly. Okay. I, I can say it the contributions of Daniel Bernoulli's we cannot deny it way he realized these simple formulations of Bernoulli's equations help us to modernize all this chemical industry by designing the pipe networks. He also helped to visualize the how we can get it the lifting force from the any air foils or as a part of the uh, air wing. So, his contributions in terms of chemical industry or the green uh, industry that liberations we can uh, we can really acknowledge his contributions in terms of these not only these equations also other components. Those are interested uh, I can uh, just encourage you please visit Wikipedia of uh, Daniel Bernoulli's and his contributions. Let us start with a, uh, the Wikipedia's information what is available is that that initially the Euler and the Bernoulli they wanted to know between the relationship between the speed at which blood flows and its pressure. So, if you look it the Euler and Bernoulli both they try to look it what could be the relationship between the speed at which blood flows that means velocity and its pressure. That is what is very important when you want to find out the disease. Okay. The symptoms of a disease we look it from the blood pressures or we look at the blood flow. Very simple way you know it very uh, beginning of your 12th class that the, the equations has a three components. Total energy has a three components. One is the flow energy component, another is the kinetic energy component. And if we consider that your blood vessels are in a horizontal, the near horizontal conditions, then we have eight a sections if you have a the flow energy per weight by kinetic energy per weight is equal to the flow energy and the kinetic energy per weight. So, that is the reason if you look at that there is a p 1 and p 1 square and p 2 p 2 squares. If rho g is are constants we can look it there is a relationship between the pressure and the velocity. So, wherever the pressure increases the definite the velocity has to decrease it or the velocity increases the pressure decreases. So, these are very common the flow problems observed long ago that wherever in a fluid flow problems when a fluid is going on if there is increase of the pressures the definitely there will be decrease of the velocity to make it the energy conservations along these fluid flow problems. So, if you look it with that concept that the speed at which flu blood flows and it pressures they have a inverse relationship. If pressure increases the velocity decreases if velocity increases then the pressure decreases. So, those relationship you can look it from this relationship which is observed many of the times. Okay. Most often what I can go back to the cyclonic disasters as you know it, it what it happens it most of the time is blown off the rooftops. Why it it happens it? If you look at these ducts. Okay. Why, why does this happen this? Whenever you have a the let us have a the wind having a velocity is 100 kilometer per hours as soon as it comes it you will have a one streamlines will go like this 
another flow will enter it and go inside the epithelial. So, you have a two streamlines of this. Okay. As you can understand it, the, the velocity of the point which is a P1 B1 and P2 V2, the velocity decreases just below of this point, the pressure is increases as compared to the P2. So, net pressure gradient multiplied to the area will give, give us a lift force and this lift force works to blown off this rooftop. So, if you look at this process that how a rooftop is blown off during the cyclonic storms, you can understand it. So, the most of the times what people they do it, they close the window and door such a way that there will be no the velocity reduction or the high pressure zone formations inside the house. If it is that the conditions prevails, then there will be no blown off the rooftops. So, if you look it this way, uh, when a, whenever we design a house near a coastal belt, then we should take care of the wind directions, we should take care of to know it, what is the wind velocity is coming in. Similar way, if you look it, we take advantage of the change of the pressures and the velocity gradient. As you know it, that as the flow is going like this over a aerofoil, which is representing a part of section of the, the wing of aircraft of an aircraft. So, what it indicates that there is the reductions of the velocity in the lower part. The, because of that, there will be the pressure increase. As compared to that, your P1, V1 will be the lessers. So, V2 will be lesser than V1, the pressures will be greater than P1. So, because of that, there will be a net force which is going to work it upward directions. That is what uplift force what is actress. So, one way we use the uplift force for lifting an aircraft, another way it is a disaster for us whenever you have a the velocity reductions increase of the pressure inside a house and you have a cyclonic storms is going on. So, there will be lift force is acting on this rooftop and that what will be going to blown off these things. So, if you look at the three mechanisms from a blood band to the lifting of roof or lifting a wing of the of an aircraft all are linked and we solved with a very simple concept of Bernoulli's equations. Now, let us look it that I wish to have to compute what could be the air speed. Okay? So, that means I can draw a streamlines which hitting in this. Okay? So, this is what the streamline hitting over this and if apply the streamlines because it is nearly horizontals, I can apply this again the Bernoulli's equations at 2 point, point 0.1 and point 0.2 and if I have a point 0.1 and the point 0.2 where I can measure the pressures which is the point which is called stagnation point, the point where the velocity becomes 0 when the velocity becomes 0. In that case, that is what the case which is V 2 is equal to 0, the velocity is equal to 0. In that case, what we will have, we will find out that gauge pressure difference P 2 minus P atmospheres will be the rho V squares or P gauge will be rho V square by 2. So, if this is a simple relationship, if you measure the gauge pressures, you can compute the velocity or the air speed. So, this simple concept of having a pressure sensor on the air wing to compute air speed still also used in modern aircraft. So, if you look at 
the applications are a Bernoulli's equations. Uh, it is really a good equations we can utilize it properly that then we can derive how the pressure and velocity variations. And so, once you know the pressure and velocity variations integrating over the area or along the streamlines, we can find out what could be the lift force, drag force, all the component we can compute it, but it has lot of assumptions. So, let us start uh, looking it for a experiment. This is what the verifications of Bernoulli's equations in fluid mechanics lab in IIT Guwahati. If you look at these ones, it has a two tubes to maintaining the constant head in supply tanks. There is two tanks are there which is maintaining the supply heads and here you have a venturi meters. You can very clearly look it the cross sections area is decreasing it after certain times again the cross section area is increasing. So, there is a uh, decreasing of the cross section area then increasing. So, you have a converging zone then it follow a divergent zones. So, if you conduct a series of piezometers which measure the pressures or the velocity head. Uh, if you have a, a series of sorry, if you look at that these venturi meters have a uh, con, uh, 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 converging zones and the diverging zones and these are a series of the piezometers are there, we can measure the pressure head. And as we know the for a particular discharge constant discharge, we can have a, a 11 piezometers locations where the radius are the different, area of the flow is different and the velocity will be the different. So, that is what, so discharge is the same since the area of the flow is varies. So, you have a the increase of the velocity and the decrease of velocity. So, if you can look it the we have the high velocity zone where we have less cross section area. This is very simple things the discharge equal is equal to area into velocity. If area decreases velocity increases that is what part we got it and we measure the velocity head uh, compute the velocity head we have the pressure head equating this if you look it more or less the total head is the same. That means, we have verified it that the total head along a streamline when going through a venturi meters it have are the same value. There are will be slight bit difference will be there which will be a there is energy loss phenomena is happening it, but we can consider it that this is more or less constant value. The total head, the pressure head and the velocity head is a constant because this is a constant the nearly horizontal flow systems. So, this way we can verify the Bernoulli's equations with these apparatus. Now, let us come to the derivations of Bernoulli's equations which is was derived by the Euler's long back in 1755, the complete derivations of Bernoulli's equations, which is very complicated forms, but very simple way. If I am to derive the Bernoulli's equations, which is gives us a relationship between the pressure, velocity, elevations in a frictionless flow, which is very idealized conditions. That means there is no C A stress component. Okay. There is no C A stress component. We are assuming it that I have a simple a streamline is going on and along this streamline is flow is happening it and these control volumes representing me a stream tube, stream tube. So, if this is my control volume 
I am trying to apply basic mass conservation equations and linear momentum equations. Here what are the forces acting it? One is weight and there is a pressure difference between these two places. The P is varies from this point to this. Here is P, here P plus d P and there is a variation of velocity P to V plus d V and area is also increases along the stream uh, streamlines A, A plus d A. So, we have a functional relationship of pressures, the velocity, density and area which is which are changing along the streamlines and the streamlines are noted here as a S the, the directional components what we have given as a S component. Now, let us have a the flow classifications or the simplifications that in this case we have considered one dimensional steady uh, incompressible or compressible that what we will discuss just bit a. We have a stream tube fixed control valve. Okay. So, basically as I told earlier we have considering a stream tube concept okay. that means for a steady flow we have a series of the streamline uh, uh, streamlines are there defining their space along the stream tube. The advantage of the stream tube is that there is no flow across this stream tube because that is what the definitions of the streamlines. There, is, there will be no flow component to normal to this part because the, all the flow component will be tangential to this part. So, there is no velocity gradient the perpendicular to that. Because of that we do not have any flow pass through perpendicular to this surface. The flow comes from these directions and goes from this. The mass inflow comes from these directions and goes from these directions. Similar way the momentum flux coming into this surface going out from this surface. So, now the problems are easy as we have considered the stream tube as a control valve. Please try to look it what we have considered is that the stream tube is a control valve because of that we have a over the surface we do not have a mass flux influx coming into this control volume as well as there is no momentum flux coming into this control volume through this surface only it is coming from inflow and the outflow surface. The problems becomes now bit easier as compared to taking a arbitrary control volumes. So, the control volume what you have considered it P remember is a stream tube. So, the pressure, velocity and density all they are varying with respect to S, S is the directions along the streamline and the T is the time component and is the we can consider the velocity and the pressures at inflow and the outflow levels are more or less uniform. We are not considering the velocity variations or the cross section levels. Along the streamline it varies it, but it is uniform when you consider equating the pressure. Now, if you look it since there is no frictions are there. Okay. So, we as we can easily consider is that C A stress is equal to 0. Okay. The C A stress the is equal to 0. So, there is no shear force component is coming over the surface. So, again we have a quite simple precision that, but if you look it if I narrow down the reduce this the size of the stream tube smaller and smaller at a particular level. So, I can see that is equivalent to a streamlines. Now, let us look at the pressure distortions. This is what how the pressure variations are there. See this pressure is here. So, difference pressure if I look at or the pressure difference between inflow and outflow here this pressure is d phi, but on the periphery of this control volumes where we have no momentum flux, no mass flux, the shear stress acting over the surface is 0, but there will be a pressure 
which we can consider a linearly increasing it from 0 from here to d phi because we want to look at the pressure difference diagrams to find out what is the pressure force acting on this control problem. Now, let us have a the basic definitions as I say that S stands for the streamline directions, A S stands for control variable area that is what is from A here A plus D A is here and D S is a along the streamlines and theta can consider is a rotations of with respect to the, the horizontal line. So, we can find out D J will be the D S sin theta. Now, let us have a basic concept here we are applying it that along a streamlines okay, in frictional less flow again I want to repeat to you whenever we talk about the Bernoulli's equations it has a two assumptions with us that along a streamlines and it is a frictional less flow. Okay. So, conservations of mass if applied through Reynolds transport theorems. Okay. In this case, we have mass influx in and out is equal to change of the mass within this control volumes that should be equal to 0 and that what as the density varies with the time we can write in this form of this integral part this integral part we can write in this form. So, okay. the here we consider density varies with respect to t uh, it does not have a functions of with space variabilities much. So, then we have a this component and the rate of the change of the mass within the in a element of the control volumes the mass flux will be rho times of a and b or rho times of q that is what we have applied it here and since we consider a and v is equal to the a into d x that is what is the volume part and we have a the rho this component will come in. These are very simple things you just look it how to get it this part. Now, I am applying the linear momentum equations in streamline directions or streamwise directions. So, sum of the force should be equal to the rate of the change of the momentum in the control volume in flux and the out flux the momentum flux the net what will get it this part and this integrals we can simplify it into this form. Here is the d v v cross is the volume the elemental volumes will be a into d s and we have a rho v both product is also velocities varies it in a space and the time the densities. So, rho v then we have to find out the force due to the gravity that is what easily we can find out of d w sin theta and this is the unit weight a into the sin theta that is what will give us the, the component of the gravity force is acting along the x directions the gravity force component uh, weight component the control part it along the x directions we are equating along the streamline directions. Similar way if I can equate the pressures in the slanted side of stream tube component then we will also get it the net force with some approximation of neglecting smaller or other terms we will get it a d phi. So, please look at the negative sign negative signs are just looking the opposite of the directions what we have considered it. So, if I equate the force the pressure force and gravity force component in linear momentum equations we will get in this form. Okay. Again we will be just equating of these two part 
And if I just rearrange this part and look it, there are the sum the terms are in mass conservation equations. If I put it that part, I will get its Bernoulli's equations in this form, which is for unsteady frictionless flow along a stream line along a stream lines. So, this is the equations along the stream lines we will have the equations which will have the pressure component will be there, the velocity component will be there and the gravity force component will be there and momentum flux component will be there. So, this component now will be simplified for steady flow what we will do it that we can integrate these things in a two points. If I have a two points one and two locations we can integrate over that that is what we have done it here. So, if I have a two points and we are looking the integrations of these two points if you look at the integrations of these two points will come this and this will be the integral of this part and this part. Now, this equation still has a the integral for the pressure components and also the local velocity components along the streamline directions. So, we need to have a again further assumptions to make it the standard form of Bernoulli's equations what you know. See what uh, we can have if you have a steady incompressible flow if I simplify that way. So, as soon as you consider it a steady incompressible flow this component becomes 0. So, any time derivative components becomes 0 partial derivative components become 0 that is there and when it is incompressible that means the rho is a constant quantity. So, it will go out from this integrations only we have a rho delta p to integrate it. So, this integration is much easier now for the case where you have steady incompressible flow. So, if I apply this to the two points that means, I will be p 2 minus p 1 rho half v 2 1 v 1 square z 1 z 2 just rearrange this. I will have this form. So, I am just rearranging the terms which is a constant along a streamlines is one part what is this? This is the flow energy per weight I will explain it what is that flow energy. This is the kinetic energy per weight this is the potential energy per weight. So, there is a three energy component at a section 1 that is what is called total energy. It has a three component one is a flow energy in one is due to the pressures, kinetic energy due to the velocities and the potential uh, energy because of the positions the z 1 the, the height from the datums z 1 uh, height. Similar way if you look at this part what he was showing that again the total energy one is a flow energy because of the pressures the kinetic energy because of the velocities field and you have a potential energy because of this. So, wh whenever you have a stream tube or the stream lines any point you consider 1, 2, 3, 4 if it is a frictional loss there is no energy losses in these 1, 2, 3, 4 points we will have a total energy becomes constant and this total energy has three component the flow energy because of the pressures, the kinetic energy because of the velocities like you have a any solid mechanics when you have a in a motion see you have a kinetic energy it is the same things, but power weight potential energy power weight. So, the sum of this energy is total energy power weight is remain same from 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 2 to 3 to 4 unless otherwise there is a energy losses between two locations of a 
streamline. So, that means this is this is a very a simplified equations for the fluid flow, fluid flow may be the turbulent, may be the laminars, but if we can identify the streamlines along the streamlines, if there is a no energy is taking out or given to the systems, then energy becomes conserved, the total energy is becomes conserved. That means, in fluid flow problems, we have three energy components flow energy that because of the pressures, kinetic energy and the potential energy. The flow energy is a totally different as compared to the solid mechanics, because in solid mechanics we talk about kinetic energy and the potential energy not the flow energy, but in case of the fluid flow or heat transfer we talk about flow energy. I will discuss more about the flow energy when you talk about virtual fluid ball concept. Remember it we introduced the virtual fluid ball concept. Now, I will talk that virtual fluid ball concept why I am not talking the balls I am talking of virtual fluid balls, because when you are talking of the ball at the these locations which are moving along the streamlines that be at the P 2. Here the balls are moving it, it has potential energy, it has the kinetic energy, there is no doubt over that. But since it is a virtual fluid balls, that means here when you talk about any cross sections, there are a large number of balls are there and as they are moving it, there are pressure field is generated over that as the pressure field is working over that, what is the amount of energy is done because of this pressure field that is what is called flow energy. So, that component is there that is the reason so it called virtual fluid balls, it is not the balls. It is the balls movement as a theoretically we are looking it which has the flow energy because of the pressure field variations, the because of the number of the fluid balls are there, they are exerting a pressure on this particular ball. As this pressure is acting it, the what is the work? For, force into the distance, that means pressure into the area, force into distance, that is what the A volume of the translations P into V by weight m g that is what is the P rho g h. If you look at this part the conceptually we try to understand it because of the pressures and if I have area of the ball of A and this is doing a work done force into distance is theoretical delta x the amount of energy to do this work will be the flow energy that is what is P rho g h. The kinetic energy per weight that half m b square by m g that is will become it in which will the meters again you look it similar way the potential energy by this. So, if you look it instead of understanding or deriving along the stream lines, the same concept we can visualize it. If a virtual fluid balls is moving from one locations to two locations, since it is a virtual fluid balls, again I am to talk about this, where we consider it is not a one fluid flow movements, we consider there are n number of fluid balls are there they are having a pressure exerting by one by others. Because of that there will be a flow energy which we quantify into pressure into area into delta x that is what by m g that weight of the fluid that is what will give us of this. So, we can say it any fluid balls if you consider it the flow energy per weight, the kinetic energy per weight and the potential energy per weight that is what is constant. So, this is the difference between a simple balls and the virtual fluid balls. 
So, what I am telling is that whenever you apply the Bernoulli's equations, you should draw the streamlines. We should visualize that how the fluid moves. If I consider a balls are moving it, a virtual fluid balls are moving it. If I draw the streamlines, I can apply the Bernoulli's equations. I should know the pressure variability, the pressure at the two points or the pressure and velocity. If I know any of them, then I can solve the problems. That is the idea. Let us have a very quick uh, what are the limitations of Bernoulli's equations. Bernoulli's equations can be applied for unsteady flow, but the simplified derivations what you use it those are for per steady flow. That means, there is no time component is there. And if we remember it, this equation is most frequently used, also misused equations. Okay. Uh, there, there is a two solutions are available for us. I can say it is one mass conservations and energy conservations. Any applications of Bernoulli's equations are uh, it is too easy, uh, people do so often, it is misused. Another is that the incompressible flow, we discussed lot of times, it is just we have to most of the fluid flow problems in civil engineering and mechanical engineering other place where flow Mach number is less than 0 0.3, we can consider is an incompressible flow because the density variations will be less than the 5 percent which is we can neglect it. The most important uh, the, uh, assumption is that the frictionless flow. That means, it cannot be applied near to the, the solid because as you know it, whenever the fluid goes through near the solid, if the solid is a fixed surface, there will be the velocity gradient, there will be the shear stress acting on that, the viscous effect will come to pictures. So, those reasons we cannot apply it. Similarly way, the mixing zones also we cannot apply it. There is no shaft work because of presence of either pumping that means, it is taking getting extra energy from the outsides or the turbine taking energy from this or pump or the other machineries. So, where we cannot apply it, but I will tell it later on that we can use this also in applying the Bernoulli's equations. That is that is what uh, the advantage of Bernoulli's equations because we can easily incorporate the energy loss or energy gain in the Bernoulli's equations as compared to the other equations what is available to us. So, that is the reasons uh, Bernoulli's equations has a lot of uh, advantages. Uh, that is what is the light if you look at this a uh, wind tunnel test if we are doing it we know very well there are the wall in both side this is the model and this wall and model side there will be viscosity effects. So, we cannot apply the Bernoulli's equations in these reasons only you can apply the Bernoulli's equations in the reasons where the valid is written. So, whenever you apply the Bernoulli's equations you have to first look at whether the frictional effect is significant or not significant and it is apply along a streamlines. That means, before applying that we should draw a streamlines, then we apply the, the Bernoulli's equations at the two points or you should justify the flow is irrotational. That is ok. That means, flow is not a rotational, there is no vorticity then constant is same for all the streams, but I encourage you to draw the streamlines and apply Bernoulli's equations. Without sketching the streamlines you apply the Bernoulli's equation, it shows that you do not have a confidence or do not have a understanding how you use the Bernoulli's equations. Because sketching of the fluid flow problems, any fluid flow uh, velocity diagram, pressure diagrams, it indicates that what knowledge we have. So, considering that part, I encourage you to whenever you have a fluid mechanics problems, 
first little sketch the streamlines find out what are the pressures what are the velocity at different point what is a look uh, height from a datums all you know it then equate it then you solve the problems ok. Without drawing the streamlines if you are solving the problems either you do not want to understand how the flow process happens or you just want to mechanically apply Bernoulli's equations that I feel we should not do it when you want to have a these things. So, that is these are all assumptions and uh, we should have a careful whenever we apply the Bernoulli's equations and here if you have the wind tunnels ok you can see that the regions the control volumes where you have a the pumps is uh, the pens are rooting it, it that is reasons you cannot have it is valid from one side to others, but your constant new new constant will come with the constant value will change because of additional energy we are putting through this uh, fan systems. Let us solve the first problems find a relationship between nozzle discharge velocity tank pre surface height assume the steady frictional slash flow ok this assumptions are really simplified the our problems ok it does not happen it ok there is anywhere whatever the flow happens is there is a frictional effect, but sometime that frictional effect may not have a that significant order which may not generate that much of error in the velocity, but anyway for the academy point of view we consider as a frictionless that means the frictions effects are very very less we can neglect. Here when you have these problems if you look it you have a tank you have a open jet and there is a height h from this. Now, I will apply the concept of virtual balls ok. Like I have a one ball is here it will move like this move like this and come out like this. there will be another ball of ball will come like this there is another ball will come like this. So, all these yellow lines whatever is given is that the path representative path of virtual balls. So, ball starts from here goes out as a preject here. Now, if you look it what is the advantage for me that at this point where is the pre surface the ball is at the rest conditions the velocity is 0 the pressure is atmospheric pressure and when you have a water jet you have a some velocity v 2 that is what you want to relationship that and you have the pressure become for a open jet it will be the atmospheric pressure. So, you know the pressure velocity and their locations from a data. So, you apply basic equations is the Bernoulli's equations. So, you, you just visualize that I have virtual fluid balls and these are ruling it ok and they will follow like this and go out from this. So, at first position they are at the pre surface and they will move it and they will go as as open jet if it, that is the conditions. So, we can find out to apply this the Bernoulli's equations along the streamlines which is visualizations of the streamlines as the path of virtual fluid balls the path of virtual fluid balls. Then we I apply at 2.1 and 2 of Bernoulli's equations if I do it I will get a relationship between the velocity and the height. Now, is very basic concept that uh, you can apply the Bernoulli's equations between these two along the streamlines. Here we are considering the average velocity distributions and uh, both the sides we have the atmospheric pressures. And if this is the case what we get it the velocity difference between these two will be 2 g h ok. And uh, 
they are considering of area, but let us not have a uh, require for continuity equations, but as you we know its value v 1 is a 0. So, we can have a v square will be the this 2 g h square root. This is a very simple things as you know it whenever you have a ball height of h it falls from a height of h the velocity at the ground will be the, the same equations what we have. How do you have that? But in this case this is not a ball these are virtual fluid balls that means fluids are moving it because in the both the points we have a the pressure is equal to atmospheric pressure. The flow energy at the set point A and point B are the same because of that it looks like that is virtual fluid balls are the balls only the solid balls are only. So, which is just representing us the velocity which is the velocity of free fall of a ball from a height h which will be the v 2 will be rho g h square things. But in this case we have neglected the friction part we have considered the jet the open jet will have atmospheric pressure the jet will not have a pressure difference and because of there is no pressure difference between section and section 2 the flow energies becomes 0 uh, becomes the same and the, the velocity is only have a the v 1 is equal to 0. So, we get it these equations, but in case of real case of the nozzle case we we do not have the flow theoretically it will not be non-uniform will not be one dimensional. In that case we have a, a introduce a coefficients of the discharge C d value which values from 0 0.6 to 1.0. 0. The theoretically there is no energy losses, but whenever we have a fluid flow and there will be energy losses and there is a change of the flow areas all if you consider it your C d value will comes out the coefficient of discharge which is a correction factor because we have not considered the energy losses not consider the change of uniform pressure distributions and the flow velocity all what contributed there is a the C d will be there which will be the coefficient of discharge which vary from 0 0.6 to 1 and one case is the theoretical case which does not happen it ok. The theoretically we cannot have a no fictional surface ok this is theoretically it is a when, but really there any surface if you consider it you will have a some energy losses the press the velocity distributions cannot be uniform at these points you will have a non uniform pressure distribution velocity distributions that is what will have a C d value will vary from 0 0.6 to 1 to compute average velocity. Now, let me tell that uh, again putting this Bernoulli's equations you know it the basically when you apply along the constant lines you will have a three energies the flow energy kinetic energy and potential energy per weight and that is what is representing this in terms of meters each one terms are will be the meter unit and you should have the basic assumption is a steady flow incompressible flow frictional less flow ok uh, no shaft work no heat transfers ok. With this let us I conclude this lectures the next class again we will discuss about Bernoulli's equations.